This episode is brought to you by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com, and also Michael Hyatt and Company's Full Focus Planner. You can check it out at practiceoftherapy.com slash full focus planner. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 165 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer. Glad you're with me for the podcast. If this is your first time listening in, glad you've found us. Glad you're here and hope you'll come back for more. And I hope you'll subscribe to the podcast. I'm really excited about this episode because, um, you know, one of the one of the perks of doing the podcast every week is I get to meet some really great people and fascinating people. And um, our guest today is one of those. Her name is Jen Fredette. And Jen uh, has a podcast of her own called A Thinker's Guide To. And we'll have links in the show notes and show summary to that. But what this is one of those situations where I interviewed uh, Jen and um, then got to her podcast later. And boy, it just blew me away. It's one of the most um, um, w- one of those podcasts that you can listen to where you just have a sense of um, really meaningful stuff and that she just shares a part of her story in in the podcast. But uh, the one thing about Jen is she is a wonderful storyteller. And in this episode of the podcast, our uh, the Practice of Therapy podcast, we're going to be talking about copywriting and the words we use. And I think that's so important, but I think you're just really going to enjoy hearing from Jen. And um, she, uh, I, I've put her podcast on my binge list, uh, listen to list, uh, because it was that good. Um, and so, uh, even the music in it is great. So anyway, um, we'll, we'll talk to Jen here in a minute before we get to Jen though, I wanted to, um, share with you something I'm a little bit of passion about or, or something that I've become is my, um, my friend David Hall says a maven around, and that is just the tools that I'm using for my productivity. And one of the tools that I've mentioned on the podcast several times, uh, but I really wanted to to share more about it. And I'm going to probably have some episodes here in the future where I talk about this more, but, um, the planner that I use. And um, I know that sounds maybe a little weird, but the planner that I use is called the Full Focus Planner. And it is a paper planner. I mean, it's like a good old school bound planner. It's a, it's a beautiful design, but it has really been something that helps me stay organized in my, not only in my practice, but just in my life in general. And it's also um, really based on a system that Michael Hyatt and company put together that is really based on the science and research just around goal setting and productivity and all of that sort of thing. A few years ago, I, I went through a course that Michael Hyatt and company put together called Free to Focus. And there's a book out now. They turned the course into a book. So I'll have um, links in the in the show notes here to the book. But I wanted to invite you to check out the planner as well. And I've set up a whole landing page on this. And it's just simply if you'll go to practiceoftherapy.com slash free to focus excuse me, full focus planner, practice of therapy.com slash full focus planner. You can see some of the, the features of this and uh, hopefully see why I, I'm such a big proponent of this. I think one of the things that I know about myself is I'm not a naturally organized person. 
And I have to put some effort into keeping myself organized. And a few years ago, I had a situation where uh, things were just slipping through the cracks. And so I had to do something. So I taught myself some of these skills, but I know that the, the free to focus course was a big influence on me. But even now using this planner every day, um, is just been a game changer for me. So I want to share that with you again. You can go to practice of therapy dot com slash full focus planner and that's the landing page that I created. It is does contain uh just full transparency here. It does contain some affiliate links. So if you purchase using those links, I do get a commission on that at no extra cost to you. But just wanted to say that. But it's why I, most of the stuff that I that I um have on my website it's stuff that I that I use myself so I know that it works well or it's stuff that I know that comes highly recommended so this is one of those one of those products one of those things I wanted to point out to you so be sure and check it out and also before we get to Jen I'd like for you to be sure and visit our sponsor for the podcast uh, therapy notes therapynotes.com they are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers in private practice. Um, as I've said before, they're who I use in my practice. They have a support um, network that is second to none. Um, if you have any problems at all, you can call and actually talk to someone and they'll help you work through it. But also just the, the fact that they've got a patient portal that is just, um, again, second to none, uh, where you can really set up um yeah, your intake systems and processes in a way that just will make your practice totally paperless. Um, so be sure and check that out. Um, therapynotes.com. And if you'll use the coupon code Gordon, just G O R D O N, you can get two months of their services for free. So be sure and check them out. So without further ado, I'm looking forward to you hearing from Jen Fredette, and Jen is just a wonderful person, and I think you'll find, as I did, she is just a gentle soul, and uh, I really enjoyed my conversation with her. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast, and I'm so excited for you to get to meet Jen Fredette, and Jen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Gordon. It's great to be here. Yeah, and uh, our... um, we kind of, she kind of found me or I found her through our mutual friend, Jane Carter. So I have to give a shout out to Jane because she's, uh, again, one of my favorite people. And so, but uh, Jen, um, I'm glad to, we, we were talking ahead of time. And I think folks are going to really love to hear Jen's story and the things that she's passionate about, uh, particularly around copywriting, which sounds kind of weird for therapists. But I think once you hear from her, you'll see why. So, Jen, as I start with everyone, why don't you tell folks uh, a little bit about your private practice journey and where, you, how you've landed where you've landed? So one of the things we were talking a little bit about before you hit record, Gordon, was how <clears throat> I have an MDiv and started off actually thinking that I was going to be a preacher. Um, although I like to drop the F-bomb more, and that's generally <laughs> something that is approved, especially by mm-hmm. good old Southern congregations. You're right. Well, all the good ones do. So, I mean. <laughs> true. True. I, I like my fan fiction about Jesus as he liked to curse. I don't know if that's totally true or not. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but so as I was working as a minister, getting my MDiv, one of the things that I became really intrigued about and really um concentrated a lot of my studies on was interpreting texts in new ways and being able to read not necessarily new meanings, but non-traditional readings into the Bible, into other um, Christian texts that we often imbue with a lot of sacredness, which I love doing. I thought I was going to go on and get a PhD in biblical literature, was not excited about having to learn German to do that. Right. And I had a year in between before I was going to apply to PhD programs. And in that year, I worked, um, or rather I served with AmeriCorps in an adult literacy Mm -hmm. agency. 
which I loved and it was really, really meaningful. And one of the things I discovered was, wow, this is so much more fun than having to translate things from the Greek or from the Hebrew. I'm really enjoying getting to help people translate their own lives and tell their stories in new ways. Mm -hmm. So I made a pivot and decided I wanted to get a master's in counseling. My partner got a job up in DC. So we moved up. We were in Winston-Salem, Greensboro, North Carolina. We moved up to DC, just a little bit of a culture shock. Um, Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with counseling. I fell in love with therapy. And so initially I thought, gosh, I want to continue to work with people who are underserved. I worked at a community mental health, which was very fun. But over time, I started to want to do deeper and deeper work. And there wasn't as much room for that with all of the case management and a lot of crisis management. Right. And so I took the risk. I wanted to go out on my own. I started with a group practice, which was really lovely. Um, Eventually, though, I wanted to continue to expand and really to not have as many restrictions on my marketing voice, really, Um, and not having to say or do things that maybe my group wouldn't align with. Or certainly when I was at an agency, you don't have to advertise that. There's -hmm. there's not enough people to serve. Mm -hmm. So that's part of how I got here as a psychotherapist. I practice in COVID. I practice out of my house, but Uh I practice in the DC, (laughs) Baltimore metro area. And I work with people who are really deep thinkers and often get trapped in how they think about life Uh and don't always tap into the deep feelings that they have. So a lot of the work I do is helping them uncover their heartbreak and actually speak into it. Right. I love that. I just, yeah. And one of the things that I was telling Jen before we we started recording is I took a lot a look at her website and, and we're going to have links here in the show mm-hmm. summary and everything. To, and I would invite everybody to go over and look at it because her her talent with copywriting is very evident just from the get go. And I loved her website. Um, and, and it's going to be on my list of of websites to point to. Mm-hmm when it comes to, uh, okay, here's a good therapy website. So, yeah. So great job on that. Thanks. Uh, Yeah. So, yeah. So what, with your passion around copywriting and I I love your story, by the way, because I think it's so typical for most of us in private practice, we kind of go through the jump through the hoops with, in in terms of getting licensed and Mm -hmm. doing all the stuff with our training and, um, the, probably the vast majority of us end up in the agency work and mm-hmm. find out that it's very rewarding, but also very difficult. Yeah. So, yeah. but um, um, t- talk some more about um, copywriting and how that you feel like that is so important to people and being able to learn how to do it well uh, yeah. with your website. So one of the things that I have noticed and I have two graduate degrees. I really like classes and learning and I've done sort of the gamut. It feels like of private practice building courses. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, over time I really started to realize is how important it is to find not just your niche in terms of who you want to serve, but your niche in terms of what marketing does and doesn't work for you. Mm -hmm. And there's 20 billion options when it comes to marketing your practice. But one of the ones that I think in a lot of ways, uh, shows up in all of them is how do we speak about who we are and who we want to serve, who we want to work with, which in online speak is copy. Copy is just written content that we have created, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be written. It can be having a conversation on a podcast, or it can be having a networking conversation, how do you articulate who who you're meant to serve, who you are called to work with? And so over time, I also really like to write. And so trying to crack the code of like, how do you actually write copy that is not just captivating, isn't just converting clients, but also is representative of who you are as a clinician became mm-hmm. more and more important to me. And I think not to shade any marketing advice, but sometimes marketing can feel kind of shallow and feel a little slimy, I think, Mm -hmm. for people. We're not wanting to manipulate people. And a lot of um, marketing techniques sometimes 
don't integrate our clinical depth, our clinical awareness, which is a real shame because therapists have all of this information about their ideal clients um, that a lot of marketing people have to do lots of research for, where we have somebody sitting and telling us their deepest, darkest secrets and paying us to hold them and help them work through it. So one of the things I feel passionate about is how can I help people translate their voice and the knowledge they already have into copy on their website, which isn't just going to help them build a practice, but Mm -hmm. also I think helps clients start to realize like, oh, I I didn't know that was a problem. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that that was a thing that I could get help with. Right. I think a lot of times when people are coming to therapy, it's because they're in pretty dire crisis. Right. There's not catching it beforehand. Right. It's a real shame. Yeah. Yeah. What I, what I love about that is that, um, but as you were, as you were saying that, what I, what came to mind for me is just, I think a lot of times we, we are so in inundated with marketing of other different things Mm -hmm. and and kind of the the theme of most marketing is is they're trying to convince us why why we should do something yeah Yeah, you know that sort of thing and and I think with yeah you're exactly right when it comes to 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 therapy websites and to what we do it's really more about you know which I think we're all comfortable with is just kind of a a kinder gentler way of reaching out to people of just being able to say, I'm here to help you if you would like to help. Yeah. And that's, that's it, you know, and just really saying, you know, this, this is how I understand your problem. Mm -hmm. And this is how I can help you. Mm -hmm. Should you choose to get the help? And that, Mm -hmm. that's a much better, you know, uh, softer sale using quote marks. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when when it comes to, to marketing um, Mm -hmm. is, people have heard me say, and a lot of people say is uh, the job of marketing in a private practice is really just helping the people that need you most be able to find you. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm not sure um, the kinds of clients that you most love to work with, Gordon. I like, sometimes they feel kind of tough. I really like uh-huh. anxious avoidant, um, very intellectualized. I have people who like, like, yeah, okay, what are we going to talk about? I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. no, life's really good. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And it takes peeling back the defenses. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. And Fritz Perls has been, I think I was the only one in my theories class. It was like, <laughs> I like Fritz Perls. So like, he's my favorite. He's not the nicest guy. All right. It's, I think that's something I often actually see in therapist copy is that we are warm, we are nurturing, and we do want to make sure we're clear that we offer that really safe container for clients. Mm -hmm. But clients have a lot of defenses already, especially if we're talking Uh about private practice, uh, private pay. Mm -hmm. People sometimes need a little bit of a nudge of like, yeah, but that actually is a problem. Like, Mm -hmm. I know it sort of works for you, but here's what you're actually missing. Yeah. And so like for a lot of my people, things look very good on the outside. Like everybody who knows them is like, whoa, you have your life together. Like you are Mm -hmm. killing it. But underneath, they don't actually feel known or seen. Right. Right. And so part of what makes copy compelling and captivating is when we can actually highlight, hey, I see the thing that you're hiding. Mm -hmm. I know that things aren't as great as you wish that they would be. And yeah. actually, sometimes you even hide that from yourself because you're too scared to go there. Right, right. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so as as people think about writing copy for their website, what would be some things that you would, kind of tips you would give on that of just how to go about it and think about that or process mm-hmm. that? Because I think a lot of times, I, th- I think some people probably are more, I know I enjoy writing, Mm-hmm. when I make the time to do it. Um, mm-hmm. But I think for some people, they just dread it. And they 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 probably hearken back to thinking, oh, I've got a term paper to write or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. but anyway, uh, t- tell give, it, give us your thoughts on all of that. Oh, I have so many thoughts. Um, mm-hmm. So one of the things that I often see people doing, and I have a lot of tenderness 
I'm like the person again, pre-COVID, if we're going out to eat, I'm like, I want to make sure everybody's invited. I don't want anybody to be left out. Like I'm sure everybody has a seat at the table. Like mm -hmm. I don't want and are you an Enneagram too? I I switch every time I take uh -huh. Enneagram. Last time I took it, I think I was a two. For uh -huh. a while I was a solid four. Okay. Um okay. but yeah. Who knows? Maybe I'm yeah. all well four. that's a, that sounded like me as well. I mean, just because mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm a two Enneagram. Uh, and so yeah, it's always just, you know, the service, you know, making sure everybody's comfortable and happy and yeah. all that. So anyway, didn't mean I digress. Okay. So go. Okay. <laughs> we could talk about Enneagram later. I <laughs> get super obsessed when I did my <laughs> clinical pastoral education. Yeah. Um but so often, and I think you and I are not alone in that, Gordon, that I uh -huh. think a lot of therapists, uh, and I think it's part of their resistance to what people, marketing is always like, you got to niche down, you got to niche down, that we don't want to exclude anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard way to write copy. Mm -hmm. um, I was a youth minister for a hot minute, and the things I hated most about being a youth minister were lock-ins, because I was always very concerned what all my kids were mm -hmm. doing when I was mm -hmm. asleep at the lock-in and Sundays after church, having to figure out where are we going to go eat mm -hmm. and trying to manage 20 something people are we going to do Mexican or Italian or like, what are we going to do mm -hmm. that it becomes really hard to come to a consensus and say what you want to say or say what you need to say when you're trying to accommodate a lot of different people, right? which then often leads to a lot of blocks when you're trying to write either your therapy directory profile or your website, because you're trying to write to Jim as well as Karen and Bob, mm -hmm. and you don't want to leave Jane out either. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to then actually distill down, what do I actually want to say? What do I actually have to say? Mm -hmm. And the other piece is I think sometimes we lose ourselves. We lose our own desire of what do you want your practice to be? If you're so focused on accommodating others, you're maybe not getting your own needs met. Right. And so the first step, and I think it's actually the hardest, is to really get in touch with your own desire. Who do I actually want, really want to sit with? Who would light me up if I could just have this person in my office and I get to go deep with them wherever they need to go? Who do I want? And when we know who we want, it starts to become easier to actually write copy to that person. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, I think it's, um, um, you know, I think it, I hear, you know, that it's a question that comes up a lot and it's something that it's almost become cliche in the private practice circles is just the word niche mm -hmm. uh, or niche or however you want to say it. And, mm -hmm. and um, I think one of the things that we, that has always helpful for me is if I think about the clients that I've had, which are the ones that I look forward to were, were, versus the ones I see on my schedule that um, I, I just dread seeing, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And so thinking about, you know, well, how is it that I talk with that, that particular person? How is it that, you know, what are our conversations about? And what are the things that, that get me excited and get uh, mm -hmm. my passions up? Yeah. And, and if we're doing those things, then it just becomes so much easier to do those things. Yeah. 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 And so that's, I think, the first problem is people try mm -hmm. to write to everybody or they end up writing to people that they don't actually want to see, but they think, well, these are the people I'm supposed to serve because I'm trained in this or I have experience mm -hmm. doing that. The next thing I often see is that, um, I mean, and these are all defenses about how we show up. And marketing mm -hmm. at its core is a relationship, mm -hmm. the relationship between me, the business, the therapist, and actually in some ways the product mm -hmm. and the future client. And so when I have a clear awareness of who that person is, I sometimes, especially if it's like a person I really want to work with. I start to be like, oh, I got to like really make mm -hmm. sure they know I'm worth it. And like, gosh, I'm, I am expensive. And like, what am I going to do? And I remember uh, my husband's a trained attorney. He works uh, in mm -hmm. emergency management now. But uh, when he was first getting his law degree, we would hang out, not just with lawyers, but like 
fancy DC lawyers who had a backyard <laughs> in DC, like in oh, DuPont, wow. which if you're from this area, like that is like, whoa, you are like killing it. And we went to a party and they're all of these very like prestigious people. And I had just finished uh, my degree and I went around telling everyone, well, I'm a psychotherapist, uh, uh. which freaks people out anyways uh, yeah but just sort of like i'm a psychotherapist i'm a psychotherapist uh, like can and read my mind <laughs> yes, yes somebody actually asked uh-huh. me I was like do i have to talk about my mother with you i was like we can if you want and my husband's just like jen what are you doing like stop telling people that <laughs> but i was so insecure and like wanting to like show up and be like, I'm important. Mm -hmm. And often in our copy that shows up by, let me tell you all the certifications I have. And let me tell you all the training I have. And let me tell you why I'm so important and and how I'm going to solve all of your problems. And clients don't care. Um, Like clients, one of my clients, we were talking about, um, I was suggesting EMDR would be a really good adjunctive thing. And he was very sweet. He's like, is it, it's the music thing. You think I should go to more music concerts? I was like, uh-huh. no, 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 not, not uh-huh. EPM, EMDR, here's uh-huh. what it means. Uh-huh. The clients don't know what these acronyms mean. What they want to know is that you're going to see their pain and help them heal from it. Yes. And so it then becomes, can you be honest and real about who you are beyond the credentials? Of course, you still need your credentials and training is wonderful And if you can't translate what that means for clients, they're just going to skim over you. Oh, yeah. I love that. And, uh, and, you know, I bullet bullet pointed what you just said, because I think it's a great quote. Clients, clients don't, I'm paraphrasing, but clients don't care about your degrees or your certifications or anything, but they do want to know that you can see their pain and you can help them with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And so that that actually brings us to the third piece Mm -hmm. is then people struggle with, uh, can I really say that? Can I, can I really, um, when I've worked with people on their copy, it's like, Jen, that feels really punchy. Oh, that feels really aggressive. Can I really say that? And all they're saying is, I know that you just smoked uh, three bowls of marijuana back to back which is a true story. Like you've just done that. Mm -hmm. You're doing that to numb out from the pain of all of these other things that therapists often pull their punches. And in doing so, they end up colluding with clients' defenses. Mm. And it doesn't allow clients to then get the help that they need because they either get so mired in shame and think if somebody really knew this about me, I, they would tell me that I have to go to rehab for the next six months and like I'm mm-hmm. going to have to do AA or NA for the rest of my life or that I'm really the screwed up one. Like my family's not crazy. I'm the crazy one. Mm-hmm. And until we can name like, hey, I know that you're doing this or you're thinking that clients won't feel seen. And mm-hmm. so we still tend to pull our punches because we don't want to wound the other. But in doing so, we're sort of just putting band-aids on people's bullet holes. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, As you're saying that, I'm kind of reminded of uh, Brene Brown to some degree, just about mm-hmm. the importance of, of being vulnerable. And that's when people begin to heal is when they can truly be vulnerable and it be safe for them to be vulnerable. And I think that's kind of, um, I think what you're saying is, is just, you um, how do we how do we convey that in our copy that you know okay this is a safe place mm-hmm. and, and we know that you've got your your shit behind mm-hmm. the behind the scenes and mm-hmm. and yeah guess what we all do and so it's okay for you to talk about that and it's not going to open up the the floodgates when you do that we're going to create a safe place for you to do that yeah. so yeah, yeah yeah so so and I'm realizing, like, I've just named a bunch of problems. I'm actually uh-huh. in some ways modeling for you all uh-huh. how I write copy, that we yes. always start with naming the problem. Yes. And then where we go, and this is a very basic copywriting formula, um, so anybody can go and use it. Um, and actually, all the biggies use it. Apple uses it. Like, mm-hmm. Hydroflex uses it. Um, I shared with Gordon just before I came on that I'm 
pregnant with my first child, which is so exciting. It is. <laughs> um, and, but now I'm getting targeted on like Facebook and Instagram with like all of these baby things that mm-hmm. you can buy. And the really good ads that catch my eye use the same formula and it's problem. And then we begin to agitate it. We start to actually talk about like, why is that actually a problem? And part of the way I was just agitating the problem is you're colluding with clients' defenses. No therapist I know wants to collude with clients' defenses. Like that is not Uh what we want to do. Then you discredit, like what have you been trying that hasn't worked? You might be writing really bland copy in an effort to include everybody. You might be posturing a lot with all of your credentials Or you might just be like really stuck, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to show up vulnerable. So my client feels a little more comfortable being vulnerable. I don't know if I want to do that. That all of those things are hard to do, especially therapists really like to do things alone, which is always sort of mystifying to me. Like this is a hard thing to do alone, to write copy that really reflects who you are and who you want your ideal person to be. That doing it alone doesn't work. And so the solution Mm -hmm. is having formulas, having frameworks, but also having people who can partner with you as you write your copy, whether it's a mastermind, a business group who can give you feedback, whether it's a coach or consultant or some sort of course that can walk you through it. Right. That just like our clients deserve and need to make an investment in their mental health and having a partner who can safely contain that for them. Mm-hmm. So I think therapists need um, coaches and consultants so they don't have to go like figure out how to get an MBA just to build yeah. a private practice. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I can, Yeah, again, to just couldn't agree more because mm-hmm. I know that you know, for me in my own journey, when I have actually reached out to others to really kind of get feedback and to really, you know, okay, I need a, need another perspective here. You know, I need somebody on the outside looking in and tell me what, because to me it might sound perfect, you know, just kind of, oh, this makes sense to me, but mm-hmm. to other people it might not. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. So are there any other copywriting steps that you would want to share? Yeah. So, One of the things that I often suggest to people, um, and I am pretty type A overachieving. My supervisor actually said to me the other day, he's like, Jen, you are a workhorse. It's like, I know, Bradley, I need to work on it. Um, And so often I hear that uh, with other uh, therapists that I work with or just colleagues, that the first big shiny thing people often want to do is completely rewrite their website which I think is actually a terrible idea. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Um, and mm-hmm. it's a lot of work to do really well and not just writing the copy, but having somebody to design it in a way that feels true to you, but is also going to speak to your ideal client. And so what I often suggest to people when you're just getting started writing copy, starting with your therapy directory profile is a really good place for you to get to experiment with what you're going to do it's also going to show you like what copy is actually converting with clients Mm -hmm. because, and it's not a huge investment in terms of time or money. And when you know what's working and you're actually getting clients that you're like, Oh, I would love like 10 more of you. I don't have room for 10 more of you, but like, this is, you're my jam. Like this is who I want to work with. Right. That's when you start writing copy for your website Um, and you can do a longer form service page. You can do essentially what is a sales page in online marketing, which really walks people through not only the story of what they're going through, but how you can help them. And you mentioned my website, um, my I think I call it services um, on my mm-hmm. website. Like that's a really good example that I'm using a sales page format uh-huh. to essentially, and I don't mean this in a manipulative way, but to pre-sell people before they ever get on the phone with me. Mm-hmm. It's pretty rare and I'm full now, but it's pretty rare for me to get on the phone with somebody who isn't already primed that they really want to work with me specifically, Mm -hmm. even when they're not always the best fit. And so that's sometimes the maneuvering, like they really hear you. And I really want you to trust me that this person's going to be a better fit for you. Right. right. But that doesn't happen super often. Yeah. Um, 
It's almost always ideal clients. It's, I frequently hear people say, oh my gosh, you were in my head. Like, I don't know how you knew all of those things, but you just knew me. Mm -hmm. And so it's a way to build rapport before they're ever now on my digital sofa. Um, And I don't end up having to do a lot of back and forth about money stuff, which I don't Uh love having to do that people who end up coming to me, it's clear how much I charge. It's clear what my boundaries and restrictions are and people are ready to dive in. Right. Several people who have started with me after this new website went live, not only are ready to dive in, but have wanted to do twice a week, like want to do deeper and deeper work, which is fabulous. Yeah. 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 That is great. So, well, Jen, I, I gotta be respectful of your time and I'm so, so glad you joined me for the podcast. So if people want to find out more about you and maybe even work with you around some of these things, cause I know you're, you're doing some of that. Mm-hmm. What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? So I'm working on yet another website. So I'll have a new Uh website probably before this podcast goes live. It's going to be a thinkersguide.com. And certainly if they want some inspiration, they can check out my private practice website, therapyforthinkers.com. And for all of your listeners, I love a good freebie. Uh Um, And part of what we talked about was how do you start to know what's in you that's preventing the ability for you to write copy that is going to represent who you really are and who you really want to work with. So they can go to a thinkersguide.com slash diagnosis. And I have a little bit of a play on the DSM of five symptoms that they can diagnose in their copywriting and some basic interventions that they can get started on without having to invest any money just to see what works for them. That's very generous. Thanks, Jen. And we'll have links to all of that in the show notes and the show summary and uh, people can access it. And and so, um, yeah, so I would invite folks too to go check out her podcast. I know I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to some episodes, A Thinker's Guide to, is mm-hmm. that correct? Yeah, and yeah. the first season was uh, The Apocalypse. I recorded it in 2020. Oh, so. wow. All right. That's great. So we'll have links to that as well. Well, well, Jen, I'm sure I will be having you again on the podcast and, and good luck with the little one on the way. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. That's exciting. So yeah. So be sure to check her out. And, um, and thanks again, Jen, for joining me. Thanks for having me. folks, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening in on my conversation with Jen. Um, It was one of those conversations that I just thoroughly enjoyed and just had so much fun talking with her. Um, She is just a a fantastic person to get to know. And um, she is just really gifted at her way of being able to word things. And be sure and check out her podcast, A Thinker's Guide to um, and, um, it's a, it's a great podcast. I was listening to, uh, one of the episodes this morning when I was out for my morning walk and, um, it's great stuff. So be sure and check it out. Also be sure and check out the full focus planner. As I mentioned at the very beginning, um, if you can get to that at practice of therapy.com slash full focus planner and it's a landing page I've set up that just tells you all about the planner and uh, some of the um, why I use it. Um, It's just really one of those tools that I think uh, is well worth your time looking into. So um, it's just made my life much easier. I call it my my paper brain, so to speak. It's, uh, you know, I'd spend and if you use the systems that uh, Michael Hyatt and company have developed with that particular planner, I promise you, you will, you will feel better about your progress and your productivity and uh, being able to meet the goals that you set for yourself. So be sure and check it out. Practice of therapy.com slash full focus planner. And also be sure and check out our sponsor for the podcast. And that's Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. They're the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers in private practice. 
They're who I use in my practice, and uh, it's a platform we couldn't live without. And it's just really uh, user-friendly, not only for us as therapists, but also for our clients and patients on the, in their in their patient portal. It's, uh, it's a great way for them to get reminders of appointments and pay bills and all that kind of stuff. It can be done all in one platform. And also now they have telehealth that's included in the platform at no extra cost. So, um, again, one of those things that you can do it all in one place. So be sure and check them out, therapynotes.com, and use the promo code GORDON, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can get two months of their services for free. So thanks again, folks, for joining me for the podcast. I'm so glad you're with me on this journey, and I've got a lot of exciting guests coming up for the podcast and lots of of great things coming this year. Um, As I've mentioned in previous episodes, I've got my G, it's no longer G Suite for Therapists, but it's called Google Workspace for Therapists, a course that is uh, being updated right now. So be sure and check it out as well. And you can get to all of my resources at practiceoftherapy.com. And um, I've updated the uh, logo a little bit. So take a look if for no other reason. So thanks again, folks, for joining me and be sure and subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it. Take care. You have been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. Please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information, resources, and tools to help you in starting, building, and growing your private practice. And if you haven't done so already, please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com. The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.